we've only been around, I mean, as a technical, a lot truly, you know, when we think about in, in Drake's uh, definition, you had to have radio telescopes. That's been a hundred years, you know, and if we got another 10,000, a hundred thousand years of history, that would be for us, it'd be pretty amazing. Right. Um, but that's still, that wouldn't be long enough to really pop up the number of civilizations in the, in the galaxy. So you really need it to be like hundreds of millions of years. And that raises a question, which I am very interested in, which is how do you even talk about, I call it the billion year civilization, right? How do we even begin to hypothesize or think about in any kind of systematic way, what happens to a technological civilization across hundreds of millions to a billion years? Yeah, like how how do you even simulate the trajectories that civilizations can take across that kind of time scale? Yeah, uh, when we all the data we have is just for the ten thousand years or or so twenty thousand years that humans have been building civilizations. Yeah, and then just I don't I don't know what you put it at, but maybe a hundred years that we've been technological. Yeah. yeah, and we're ready to blow ourselves to bits or you know drive ourselves off the planet. Yeah, no, it's really interesting. But there's got to be a way. I think that's really a frontier. So you had David Kipping on not too long ago. Um, and David and I did a paper, uh, and Caleb Scharf, David really drove this, uh, where we, you know, it was a Bayesian calculation to sort of ask the question, if you if you were to find a detection, if you were to find a signal or, you know, a, a techno signature, would that come from a civilization that was younger, your age or older? And you could see, I mean, this is not hard to do, but it was great. The formalism, the formalism was hard, you know, it's kind of intuitive, but the formalism was hard to show that, yeah, they're older, you know, probably much older. So that means you really do need to think about like, okay, how do billion year civilizations manifest themselves? What signatures will they leave? And yeah, can you even, I mean, what's so cool about it, it's, it's so much fun because you got to, like, you have to, uh, you have to imagine the unimaginable. Like, you know, would you still, I mean, obviously biological evolution can happen on, you know, on those kinds of timescales. So you wouldn't even really be the same thing you started out as, but social forms, what kind of social forms can you imagine that would be continuous over that? Or maybe they wouldn't be continuous. You'd get, they drop out, you know, they destroy themselves and then they come back. So maybe it's, you know, it's a, a trunk or a, a punctuated, uh, uh, evolution. I mean, but we got to sort of, this is the fun part. We have to sort of work this out. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, I mean, one way to approach that question is like, how, what are the different ways to achieve homeostasis as you get greater and greater technological innovation? So like if you expand out into the universe and you have uh, optic cards have scale, what, what are the ways you can avoid destroying yourself? Just uh, achieve stability while still growing. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, that's an interesting question. I think it's probably simulatable. Could be. I mean, you know, agent-based modeling, you could do it with that. So, so you know, our, our group has used agent-based modeling to do something like the Fermi paradox. That was, that was agent-based modeling. But you can also do this. People at Santa Fe have done this. Other groups have done this to do use agent-based modeling to track the, the or formation of hierarchies, the formation of stable hierarchies. The, so I think that, I think it's actually very doable, but, um, understanding the kind of assumptions and principles that are going into it and what you can extract from those, that is what is sort of the frontier.